Hey everybody, this is Harry, one of the five grumpy old bastards. And uh, this is a response video to Jay, or should I just say Blu-ray Critic 1971. The other grumpy old bastard from West Virginia. He had posted a video, well, I guess I seen, I seen it yesterday, so maybe he posted it yesterday or the night before, uh, where he uh, was going down memory lane, down nostalgia about the first videos, uh, her, his video career, or I don't want to say video career, video history with uh, physical media from VHS to uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. And uh, kind of told us where he bought his, what an amazing memory he can remember. Uh, every store that he went to, uh, where he bought a, a DVD player or VCR, and uh, what movies, where he bought it from, and, and how much it cost. And he's got an amazing memory. But I also know he, he keeps a, 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 a diary of movies that he's watched, uh, and he posts them on Facebook every once in a while. So he's meticulous that way, and it's very good to be that way. Unfortunately for me, I'm not. I try to base, uh, remember stuff. And um, I guess my history with... Uh, look at that parrot. Um, my history with uh, home media, physical media, started back in the 80s, like with most people. I don't count the time in the 70s when my father went dumpster diving and came across 8mm porn films and a projector. Uh, of course, I was a, I was about 12, 13 years old. He said, "Hey, hook this this old bell and howl up and and run this film and see what's on there." And turned out some old black and white porn movies. So, anyways, <laughs> surprise, surprise, and that ended quickly. So, I remember our first VCR. Um, we rented rent to own you know like one of those rent to own places my my parents didn't have a lot of money um when i was growing up they uh my father was a retired uh railroad worker uh, from long island railroad uh, but he was also disabled so they were living off of um, his checks and my mother worked in a hotel business as a head housekeeper slash maid and uh so they didn't make a lot of money uh, when I was growing up, so there was always a struggle. So any, anything like buying expensive um, TVs or, excuse me, uh, or equipment was kind of hard to do. So uh, when I started working, I, I started working for a company called Publix, uh, which is a grocery chain here um, in Florida, and I guess there are in other states too now. And uh, so I was able to put money down on one of those rent to owns because my mother was doing a rent to own uh, thing for a television set. And when she went in, we seen this top loading uh, VCR. And I was like, oh, man, I'd like to get that. You know, and it was about, if you bought it outright, it was about $500. But if you paid for it, which I paid like every two weeks, something like that, it was. It was like $25 uh, every two weeks, which wasn't bad. I think it was a Phillips. I, I can't remember, but I remember it being top loading. And uh, they had a little mom and pop uh, video store uh, down here. This is all in Fort Lauderdale. I got to move this over here. Oh, that's terrible, the sun. So um, we lived in Fort Lauderdale, and there was a little mom and pop store in the shopping plaza that rented, uh, you could rent or purchase uh, VHS movies. And um, that's where I uh, bought, the original thing was, the reason why I got the VHS was because I'm a big Paul McCartney fan, okay? Beatles, Wings, uh, Paul McCartney fan. So he had a movie out in 1984 called uh, Give My Regards to Broad Street. And it was coming on HBO and I wanted a copy because VHS tapes back then, uh, if you bought them new, some of them were uh, retailed at $89, $79, $99. 
for a home video VHS. Um, and then, but if you find them in the store, and I, and I found one in this mom and pop store, um, and it, they wanted fifty dollars for it new. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I can't do that. So it was coming on HBO, and I, I found out that you can uh, uh, record off a of cable TV onto a VHS VHS tape. So that's what I did. That's what originally what I bought it for was just for that movie. And then um, I bought uh, blank VHS tapes, which they sold, and they were, oh man, a fortune. I, I trying to be like Jay now, trying to remember the price of them. But I, 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 I know a three pack, or it was two pack, was almost twenty dollars for for that. So you know, you think <laughs> renting to own a VHS and a, a player. And, and and buying this stuff, I could have just bought the movie outright, but I know I still would have had to have VHS player in the in the uh, anyways to play it. So I bought uh, these gold gold stamp Memorex um, uh, VHS tapes and um, recorded the movie. And you remember they used to have what three settings on it, which was this SP standard play, which took up the whole thing, and then there was another one, and then there was LP, which which um, you could record at least up to three movies. So each time, if you recorded three movies on one VHS, the quality of the picture went down. But you could, I mean, you know, it was still playable and you can watch, but it was the quality of it uh, degraded some. And then, but then we started renting movies. They had opened a video store. Uh, I don't remember if it was Blockbuster or another store, but I remember going in and, and, and renting uh, a movie called Amadeus. Um, it came out around that time, about 82, 83, 84, something like that. And I wanted to watch it so bad because I, you know, I'm into history and I was like, oh, this is about Mozart. And I heard it had a lot of rage reviews. And when I was a kid in New York, Amadeus was the big Broadway play. So I would used to see commercials and things on TV in New York when I was a kid about Amadeus and so I wanted to see this movie so that was the first VHS movie I actually ever rented was was that and then I say and then I started to buy movies but not a lot I would buy here and there um, Fox movies, um, the, uh, I remember buying the seven year itch on VHS, uh, I remember buying a lot of older movies, that, uh, Cary Grant, matter of fact, uh, when he passed away in 1986, I bought, I was able to buy a couple of his movies, and I had to order them, um, and that's when Blockbuster was Blockbuster come out, so I had a special order a lot of those VHS tapes, and they were like nineteen ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine. But I was making more money at that time, and I was able to purchase them. But I wasn't buying in bulk, you know, three or four. I had to buy at least one every payday. So I was buying these older titles, and my mother's like, "Why the heck are you buying these?" old 1930 movies <laughs> I said because I love them that's the, the, the 1930s for me films the 20s and 30s were for me my favorite era for films so uh, especially the transition from silent to talkies and that time when they had they would have silent movies but with uh, musical scores on them so the very early uh, like the the jazz singer and such so I, that's how my my VHS uh, uh, adventure started. This is boring as hell. I don't even know if anybody would be interested. So yeah, so that that's the VHS, and then then DVD came along in the '90s, and I remember um, it was right after my first wife passed away, and um, they had a, a place called Suncoast. Um, Sun, was it Suncoast? Suncoast Videos or Entertainment, and they had movies in there, VHSs and 
and some I think record albums and and, and the CDs and then they had these DVDs I was like oh what's this and I didn't know anything about it really because at that time when my first wife passed away uh, everything kind of stopped the 90s was kind of like a lost desk decade for me because I my mother-in-law died first after I got married and my mother my father died and my mother and then my wife died and this was all within three year period three or four year period so and then I had three kids to raise by myself after my wife passed away. So uh, I didn't know, you know, I wasn't paying any attention to, you know, that I was always watching my VHS tapes and, and renting them. But then I, when I went to the Suncoast, I was like, oh, it was Air Force One. I think it was Air Force One. It was one of the first ones I'd seen. And the guy says, oh, yeah, that's a DVD. That's a new thing. It's better picture quality. And... Uh, you know, there's no rewind, you know, you could put, plop it in. And, of course, there were some movies that were, were long enough that you had to, f you know, play on one side and then had to flip it on the other, uh, which I hate, hate hated those. Um, but uh, it's always put in the wrong side. So I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. So when it came time, I, I, I went looking uh, for... Um, a uh, DVD player and I had come into a little bit of money after my wife passed away it wasn't insurance or anything but it had to deal with uh, a, a malpractice suit and uh, so I was looking for to buy me one and I went to a uh, uh, Circuit City I think it was and I, I bought my first DVD player for $350 flat out $350 and uh, I was like man that's a big investment and um, and then I remember them the first movie the DVD I ever had was the uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves because they offered you three three titles that you could pick from to um, you know when you bought the uh, the DVD player they gave you a choice of three titles and the other two I don't remember too much uh, of um, I think one of them was Braveheart but yeah, and I said, well, I'll take the Prince Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves with Kevin Costner. I'll take that. So that was the first DVD um, that I've actually w watched uh, on the player and uh, in, in in person too. So um, and that one lasted me a while. I, I had a uh, a Panasonic uh, DVD player, and and then my collecting went crazy. Um, I ignored the VHS tapes <laughs> as much uh, a lot of them and then when I find these titles because I wanted the better quality so I went ahead and uh, purchased a lot of DVDs um, and then uh, lost some people stole some through the years and then the Blu-rays come out and the blue, I was like, oh my goodness, what, what's it going to be next? Uh, you know, the hologram, uh, you know, you'd be right inside the movie, just sitting in the room and everything would be surrounding you, I guess. So the Blu-ray came out in HD and I almost got the HD uh, player. And thank goodness I didn't. I, I, got, I went ahead and wound up getting the Blu-ray player um, because... And I was like, well, I'll take a chance on this, and then um, and I was able to get mine for about two hundred dollars, maybe a little bit less. I put it on layaway at the store I work at, and I picked up a couple of titles, put that on layaway. Uh, can't remember exactly which ones were my first uh, Blu-rays, but it must have been newer films from the. Uh, the from the from that time period uh, from the late 2000 or 2010 2009 something like that uh, I remember going to Best Buy and buying uh, some blu-rays um, and they were really expensive uh, you know like going to FYE and in Best Buy and the blu-rays were were like 30 bucks uh, for you know anything new like that I remember when CDs came out 
they were really expensive, you know, 17, 18, 19 dollars for a CD, and if it was a double CD, it was it was nearly three thirty dollars. So, and that was with the case with that, and then I found Amazon. <laughs> Uh, which I knew about Amazon, but Amazon I, I usually purchase books through, um, and then uh, then I seen their prices on on Blu-rays and DVDs. So now I got maybe fifteen hundred between Blu-rays and DVDs. I got that many in my house, and I still collect to this day. But I'm kind of picky now. I used to buy every title new title come out every payday I go over there and I would buy like new titles uh, and stuff and then uh, and then get pissed off because you know a month later two months later it drops down sometimes five to ten dollars difference and uh, even with the discount that I get at work it's still so I, I learned to wait and then kind of now like what we were talking about the streaming and uh now I'll watch a movie and 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 see if I like it, and if I do like it, I'll order it. Like now, we watched I watched The Vanishing uh, from 1988 the other day. I rented it from Netflix, uh, the Criterion uh, Blu-ray, and watched that. And I was like, well, this is something that I would like to have in my collection. So eventually, I will have that and put it in my library because I don't want to buy, you know, movies that. Uh, I'm not gonna like or enjoy uh, you know the other bad thing too was with the, the blu-rays and and DVDs uh, I used to watch when I started watching YouTube videos and I seen other people's collections like James's collection uh, Ian's and, and then some other people where they have their whole one whole room dedicated to nothing but movies and I was like holy cow look at look at all these blu-rays and DVDs that these people have and and I still find I still watch some of these other people's collections. It's like my goodness, and I was like, my wife says, "Well, I hope you never get like that." Well, it's it's getting there, <laughs> it's getting there, but at least I'm I'm very picky and choosy now on what I want to buy and all. But anyways, I rambled on. It's almost uh, it's over 17 minutes long now. I've rambled on nothing worthwhile, nothing entertaining. Thank you. Peace out. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Good to see you back, Ian. Bye.